Evening family, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us this evening, everyone on YouTube that's tuning in. Thank you for joining us this evening and we hope you'll be blessed with a message that Pastor Mark is going to bless us with tonight. Um, let's just close our eyes and we can open a prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity that we can be here as friend and family in Christ. Father God, we just pray and ask our spirit to anoint each and every word that goes from my lips and from Mark, past the Mark's lips, Lord God. We just pray that the word will be anointed as it falls on the ears, Lord God, and that the word will become life in each and every person's heart. Father God, we also pray for each and every person that's here, Lord God, just bless them, be with them, protect them, guide them, and we just pray and we ask the Holy Spirit to minister in this evening tonight. Thank you. We thank you for it and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's first do our statement of faith. Everyone can just say after me. I believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. His only Son. His only, only Son. Son. Our Lord. Our Lord. I believe in the Virgin Birth. I believe in the Virgin Birth. I believe Jesus was crucified. I believe Jesus was crucified. Died and was buried. Died and was buried. I believe that on the third day. I believe that on the third day. day he rose again from the dead. He rose again, again from, from the dead. And he ascended into heaven. And he ascended into heaven. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the communion of saints. I believe in the communion of saints. The forgiveness of sin. The forgiveness of sin. The resurrection of the body. The resurrection of the body. And life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father God. We just give glory and honor. Holy Spirit, more than welcome in this place. More than welcome to minister in this place. Father God, we just glory and honor. God's wish 
for all his people is that they will stand together, that they will support each other financially, physically, and spiritually, that we will stand together as his people, that the world will see how God's people can stand together, how God's people support each other. Look how God's people are willing to invest into his kingdom. Now family, that is what part of Christianity is also about. It's about seeing your brother suffering and supporting him, whether it's financially, spiritually, whether it's with a good word, whether it's just picking him up, taking him to the shop so he can go and do his grocery shopping because he doesn't have a car. Seeing that your brother, your sister might be so broke, there's no food in the, in the kitchen. Isn't the God, isn't the Christian thing to do is, you know what, put that over in your car and go spend 600 grand on groceries just to support them in their household. Or even you see your brother, your sister, spiritually, they're not up to Paul, going to them and sharing the word with them. Isn't that what Christianity is about? Isn't that how we can stand together and build God's kingdom? What we must do is we must give out of a giving heart, not out of a feeling of being forced. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. So let each one give as his purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves the cheerful giver. God's outpouring of blessings. When we generous to him and to others, God rewards us in a very generous fashion. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, and in all that you need, you will abound in every good work, as it, as it is written. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8 and 12. Scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. No, he was, who supplies seed to the sower and bread or food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest for you, right of righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but, but, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Now, family, we can just quickly give out the envelopes.
would like to invite Pastor Mark Lillius to the stage as he's going to share an awesome word with us tonight and I believe each and every person will be blessed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yes, awesome word. Sure. Amen. And his people, Jesus said, I am going to prepare a mansion for us 
in his kingdom. Every generation will enter. All those who accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior will enter into his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Say this, we are not getting ready. We are ready. We are not getting ready. We are ready. There we are. And then in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, we read from verse 13 to 18. As when Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and so others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Bless you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against you. Yet we read the requirement for the church of Jesus. The first requirement for a permanent building is a solid foundation. We need something solid. The church of Christ is built upon a solid rock. Upon this rock, Jesus said, I will build my church. The rock being referred to is the confession made by Peter by divine revelation. The eternal truth is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. That is the confession. It is a solid foundation. Not only is Jesus the foundation of the church, but also the provider of all the building materials. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8, we read, So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gives us for building you up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. We are told that Jesus gave for the building and for destruction. We are also told in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11, let's go there. Therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. To encourage one another so that they may build his church. I urge each and every one of us to start loving and building in each other's lives, just as Jesus had built in his disciples with love. Yes. Amen. We haven't made ourselves into stones to be used as the building blocks of the church. The Lord has done this for us through his Holy Spirit. Unless the Lord Himself builds the church, as He said, on this rock I build my church, we must be willing for the Spirit to convert us to be the church. Jesus said, Jesus will not finish building His church until the end when He returns to claim it. It is Lord Jesus who saves us, it is Jesus who forgives and pardons us, and it is the Lord Jesus who adds those who are being saved to his church. And today, in this day, in this hour, it is still Jesus Christ who saves. And today, whenever the Lord saves a person, he adds that person to his church. How does Jesus build the church today? By saving people from their sins. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to 16, we read the following. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ appointed it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people 
for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in this faith and in the kingdom of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is Christ. From Him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows, uh, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And to each of us was given grace from Jesus as Christ has appointed it. It was He who gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, to repay God's people for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all reach youth in faith and in knowledge of the Son of God. We are all to speak truth in love. We will all, uh, we all things grow up into Him who is the head of the church, and that is Christ. What is God's plan to build the church? In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to 16, we just read, you can go and read uh, the plan of God that he has for the church. We see in this chapter that God God is all in love. So God builds his church through gifting believers, believing Christians who love and seek God's will for them. It is about his people, his love, and his calling in our lives. God places us in the gifting so that uh, so with love he receives his wonderful gift, as it says in Ephesians chapter 4. It seems to be saying that through that though it is Christ's will for the church to be unified, it is also his will for it to be diverse by those men who show a great deal of variety. Each believer receives a different grace from Christ. And in this constant context, the grace means the ability to perform in the gift and task that God has called us to do. So we all have different gifts from one another. Paul teaches us that if you have a gift of prophecies, then prophesy. Or a gift of serving, then serve. Or a leadership, then govern according to the gift God has given you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in Romans chapter 12, in 1 Peter chapter 4, and in Ephesians chapter 4, we read about the gifts that God has prepared for us. Please spend some time on these chapters, study them, and understand what it is that God wants you to do with your gifts. Also in Exodus chapter 31, we see Bazel was gifted with craftsmanship in order to build the tabernacle. So now we see that God gives gifts for His purpose as we find our gifts and use them to build the body of Christ to help the church grow. God empowers us with grace, unmerited favor. Why? To build His church. And this family is His grace plan. Okay, so now I beg you all asking how do we find our spiritual gifts? Because spiritual gifts are given from God to build the body of Christ. We find them by getting involved and by serving in the ministry. Yes. By serving our loved ones and our friends. By showing love, we are showing our true gift that God has given us. We must be servants. As we serve, it becomes clear what our gifts are. Therefore, if you think you have the gift of teaching and you teach, you feel edified. But if nobody else is edified by your teaching, then it may not be your gift. Spiritual gifts will always edify both the user and the receiver. So now, how do we find these gifts? Find a way to serve the church, to serve people. While serving, you will find out what edifies you and others, and what does not. You will find out 
one gift you have and which one you don't. As you continue to use your gifts, they become stronger. We are all responsible for developing our gift to the fullest potential for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. To receive these gifts for us, we must be willing to submit to His word and not to conform to this world. God gave Abraham instruction when he said, Take your son and go sacrifice him. The scripture reports it quite clearly. God said it, Abraham did it according to God's instruction. He submitted. When we are gifted to do God's word, we sometimes ask, But why must I sacrifice this or that? Why must I give up this or why must I do this or why, 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 why? Why must I move from here where all my friends are and today we are going to start a new life? God gives the gifts for His purpose. And until we can understand, just as Abraham understood and submitted and trusted, trusted God, He knew that God had bigger and better plans. And in Jeremiah 29, 11, we read, For I know the plans I have for you, because of all. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Abraham understood God had a bigger plan. And God promised Abraham he would be the father of the nations. A bigger plan, a bigger gift. The gift of Christ to save the nations. God promised Abraham. Today I encourage every one of us to submit to his will and his church. Seek what gift he has given you and work with it. Learn to submit and he will reveal your plan he has for you. So then, what exactly is submission? Firstly, submission is misunderstood in today's society. <laughs> the word submission has become like a swear word. No, I won't. So it's submit. No, I won't. Why must I submit? Submission is an art which has been lost in the body of Christ. This might be the underlying reason why many have lost their gifts and their calling and their destiny or even their businesses, their jobs, their houses, cars, families, even financial prosperity, which God has gifted and planned for them. Submission is not weakness. It is simply power under authority. You see, everything is the opposite when it comes to the kingdom of God. If you want to reach the top, you need to place yourself at the bottom. If you want to receive, you need to give. Mm -hmm. If you want to be first, you need to be lost. The way out in the kingdom of God is there. Jesus was obedient when he was led into the wilderness. And the result was an open heaven over his life, followed by signs, wonders, and miracles in his ministry on the earth. Say so this I need an open heaven over my life. I need an open heaven over my life. And my church. Today, God will hear your voice in the wilderness you find yourself in. Trust and submit to His plan. His word for your, His word for your life today. Be like Abraham, and He will build your future in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we you get down, we get up first. No one walking around. If you are sitting there. And thinking to yourself, I need this. I need to be saved. Please help me. I want to know this Jesus who I'm talking about. Then I would love to pray for you. If I ask you the question if you have to come today, where would you spend eternity? I ask, please think about this question. Please do not leave this place without knowing the answer to it. Do not worry about the person sitting next to you. Don't let that hold you back. We know that God does not want anyone to die and go to hell. That is why He sent His only Son as Savior, so that we can spend eternity with Him in heaven. So I'm inviting you to please do the right thing. Do not be here and not be sure about your salvation. Please. So I'm going to ask you. To I'm going to ask you to come in front or not embarrass you. All I will ask you is to come to see that you will raise your hand just so that I can 
can see where you are. That I may pray for you. So I can count for three. One, two, three. Thank you. And that is the second. And help and, and, and be able to speak right now. I pray that you raise your hand. Please raise your hand if you really need salvation now. I'll give you a few more minutes. I'm going to invite the whole church to pray with us. So I'll ask everyone who raised their hands to pray this prayer with me. Please pray out loud. Repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And there's nothing that I can do to save myself. No longer will I close the door when I hear you knocking. By faith I gratefully receive. Your gift of salvation. I am ready to trust you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come to earth. Come to I believe that you are the Son of God. We died on the cross for my sins. And rose from the dead on the third day. Thank you for bearing my sins. And giving me the gift of eternal life. I believe your words are true. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And be my Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Today you have come to Christ in faith, trusting Him as your Lord and Savior. Today you are saved. Thank Jesus for His grace. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. If you have prayed this prayer in sincere faith, you are saved. But one more step to complete this step is to be baptized. So if you are not in a church or if you are not connected to a church, I pray that you find a home, find a place where you can where you can be part of the ministry and be baptized. So I pray right now that all of those who are watching out there, watching on, on, on Facebook and YouTube and everywhere where our faces now, ministry is being heard. So please complete this. Thank you. We all welcome to the family of God. Thank you all. Thank you.